Earlier today, I had Lucky outside with me thatching. He spent so much time winding to be let back inside. So I'm really not sure how this is going to work, but this afternoon, we're going to go prospecting. Jump in. Jump in. Oh, you old man. You old man already. Guy, oh, so soft. So I'm back at my soup. I'm back at my super remote spot. So based on the comments on the last video in the Choose Your Own Prospecting Adventure series, we're now going to move to the front of the gravel bank. You can tell I wasn't thinking when I set the high banker up because I knew I was going to be digging this area and there's my, there's the spoil from the grizzly bars, right smack in line with, you know, with this big rock and those big rocks. So probably the best place to start this trench is you know right there underneath that pile well there's certainly uh, still big rocks here uh, what's wrong lucky Oh, you poor thing. We're gonna have to toughen you up. We really are. He's so used to being an inside dog. <laughs> oh well. Maybe when the weather warms up. All right, that's a, um, a pan of classified material. And out of that last lot, got the first bit of glass. Which isn't really saying much, because although glass is kind of roughly equivalent to gems, it's a little, it's a very large, flat piece. And this is where it's often where people get mixed up is that they think about the density of the material rather than its fluid dynamic properties and in terms of fluid dynamics this is not a heavy because it's so it's so large so flat you know a lot of surface area which means a lot of friction and the water can be moving along and not a lot of uh, total mass relative to the surface area but let's see what we got in this pan I'll just reduce the volume a bit with the turbo pan. I'm not confident that this is very good at holding the fine gold, but as long as I guess if we're consistent in our sampling method, it doesn't matter. Yeah, except throwing away gold's never fun. Now, just in case there's pickers, uh, let's see what we got. Now we're nowhere near uh, a false bedrock or a solid bedrock yet. This is really just kind of what's behind that, um, that big rock. And well, also underneath a couple of big rocks. Let's see what we got. Well, I can see some color. <laughs> That's um, not a bad start. Oh, lucky, poor boy. He really just wants to go home and sit back on the couch. I think if he's gonna enjoy coming out with me, I'm gonna have to bring him a chair and a blanket, at least while the weather's cool. That is interesting. Okay, now you see this piece here. Uh, no, not really. That is, that's really kind of chunky. And if you look at the shape of it, there's no way that could have survived in one piece in the flow for any sort of serious length of time. Well, there's another bit up here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, well, seven specs, eight specs, nine specs. With the last one being that it's nowhere near a picker and it is kind of flat but it is also um, a very fragile piece it hasn't been in the creek for very long at all Oi! Just pulled out that big flat piece of rock there and behind it it wasn't even packed these are all there's all these cavities in there and it's all loose that would kind of indicate from most YouTube videos they watch that it's not a good spot but I'm expecting something different oh, just down to the last little bit of the second pan well there's some some nice chunky specks there but they're quite gritty grainy like I can feel that between my thumb and finger simply about the same in mass because those grains Anyway, I don't know. Inconclusive, how about that? We'll say it's inconclusive. So I've just finished the third pan, and that is interesting. Oh, lucky. There 
other than some really tiny flower, that is the only, that's the only piece. So right here, we got that funny shaped thing that wouldn't have survived much in the, in the flow before it got broken into pieces. Right there where the shovel is, we got those, those granular pieces. And then right, <laughs> right there, we've got almost nothing. <laughs> so this is where we get to the mad bit of the mad scientist prospecting. Now I've, I've got my own theories of where the gold could be in this bank. And while I think I've got some idea, I really don't know. I'm, I'm basing it off my theoretical knowledge. This series of videos that we're going to be doing together, where you directing me to the next place to sample and me, you know, doing that, is really about uh, gathering the evidence as I go, which is part of, uh, I guess, keeping me honest, keeping me so that I'm, I'm, I'm presenting the data as I go. I can't just sort of have it all up and ready to go and then present this, you know, fabulous set of data which matches up perfectly with what I predicted. No, I want this to be more verifiable than that. Not to mention the very real possibility that I can end up with a lot of egg on my face if what we find is nothing like <laughs> what I think the theory predicts. I wouldn't have started here if I didn't think there was a chance of there being some really good gold. I'm running out of time so I'm going to try and dig another pan long and then see how many I can get deep and along. Underneath this big rock we have this big rock which goes from there to there and I think it's going to be quite tricky to pull out unless we move this which means we've got to move that. Oh my god. That's actually rather big that rock. <laughs> right now it's easy. Oh, excellent. Good boy. So we've got a small number of specks there. And then look, look at this piece here. That looks like it's straight out of the reef. I gotta hurry because um, we've got to get back to home to meet the bus. Get, we'll get this panned off. Actually, we won't. Now it was just as well I did head back because the um, the bus was waiting for me. Uh, now I've got the majority of this panned off. Some lead peeking through there, which is cool. Oh no, lots of lead. Um, one, two, three, four shotgun pellets. Where's the gold? <laughs> Two bits of fly poo. You've got to be kidding. That, oh, that's hilarious. One, yep. Two fine, fine specks. Oh, which is now floating away. <laughs> when my mum was teaching me to pan, she said that when you start finding lead, that means you're getting close to the good gold, not actually, you know, on the good gold. Now, I'm not sure if it was immediately obvious, and if it is, I'll put up a little clip of it right now. But these gravels are not very hard packed within this bank. Because they're so angular, and a lot of the shales are very flat, when they fall, they're falling in such a way that there's a lot of spaces in between them. And what I suspect is probably happening is that a lot of the gold, if there is any, of course, if there is any, I suspect that a lot of the gold is falling down between all those uh, all those gaps in the in the in the gravels or in the rocks. This situation is a little bit unusual compared to a lot of other uh, a lot of other deposits that you might have seen on YouTube, and it's unusual for a bunch of reasons. But one of the reasons is that the this gravel bar has only been formed in a a really a flash flood the top of the catchment would be at most a kilometre away it's it's not very big it's not very wide and when and we don't get a lot of rain in Bendigo, and so the only time 
this creek really, really, really flows. When it floods, enough floods enough to move the sort of the big rocks that I've been struggling to pull out of the way out of this trench. It only happens when there is a massive downpour of rain. There's this massive runoff, and because the ground is so bare and uh, so hard and and doesn't absorb water very much, the runoff, well, the rain hits the ground, runs off, hits the creek, floods down the creek, and then it's gone. So you don't have those consolidating long-term floods or those consolidating long-term flows that vibrate the gravels or vibrate the rocks and get gravels and then sands to fill up all the cracks. The, the, this big, the bulk of this big gravel bar has been formed in a very short period of time. And something else you might have noticed is as I've been getting deeper, there's been less and less clay because the clay deposit is from the subsequent flows, the small flows that have washed down silt and clay off the catchment and they've sort of filled in the top of the gravel bar but not really down below and of course the vegetation on top of the gravel bar has contributed to that by you know providing an environment where those small particles will be trapped in the surface. So the fact that we're now getting shotgun pellets out of the gravel is an encouraging sign uh, and therefore even though there's no gold uh, I'm not Oh, well, I'm not actually worried at all. In fact, if anything, I'd probably be excited. I would expect the smaller gold to be trapped in the upper layers where there's more fine material, including the roots and the clay and stuff. Whereas in the layers we were working from just then, where we got the shotgun pellets from, it's, it's very loose gravel, and so there's not a lot of space to trap the fine gold, which means that the fine gold and any heavy, chunky gold is going to be further down. And so, fingers crossed this gravel bar is going to, going to yield some good gold yet. But if not, it's going to yield good information. So now, uh, I'm not sure if I should bother asking you what I should be doing next. I think the answer is going to be obvious. It's going to be digging deeper and digging longer in that longitudinal trench. But if you think I should be doing something else or, or doing what I'm doing in a different way, then let me know in the comments. Probably at least the next video. I'm, I'm going to be working on that longitudinal trench and showing you what I get out of it. So if you've got suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, I will um, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.